Our aim as educators in the first stage is to get students to be able to be novice synthesizers and evaluators of their experiences. As a result, the teaching and learning approach should provide students with some trigger questions that aim to abstract meaning from apparently unrelated parts. The students at this stage, when they're reflecting, find it really difficult to actually even work out what experience to reflect on and where the meaning can be found in critical incidences or just in everyday habits. So the assessment and the learning outcomes will all be about just getting the student to use the what model. But the teaching and learning aspect is really important. Because it is very much around introductory material and introducing them to the concepts of reflection, it might be really useful to consider developing an online module for explaining reflection theory in relation to your unit and in your discipline and in your context. And that might be an avenue for developing online forum discussions, which is a really fantastic way of creating some formative assessment. But the focus really should be about navigating the world of work so that it fits in with the will framework. So all questions could relate to how, they, how their work experience in the past or maybe their work currently is relating somehow to their discipline knowledge. So that the student role again is saying to them, we're not expecting you to be an expert reflector, but we are expecting you to delve into reflection models, the what, so what, now what model is very useful for this and we want you to be at the end of this particular unit a new reflective learner. As a course director or unit chair the key focus for you will probably be on operationalizing the reflective practice at a stage one level so whether it's at um, in, a, in a second year unit in first trimester or if it's perhaps in a, a first year unit in the second trimester, it doesn't really matter, but stage one needs to be about going slowly, slowly with the student, introducing them to the concept of reflective practice and what reflective practice can do for them. Um, the words reflective practice and reflective learning can sometimes be interchangeable. I guess that we're using reflective practice here in this paradigm because we're wanting uh, students to imagine their future self in, um, in employment and their employability. So it does have a slight focus on uh, the way in which they're going to evolve their um, discipline-specific skills in a way in which might be sustainable for their um, future careers. So that's the reason why we use reflective practice as the, the wording, but you can use reflective learning if you'd like students to, introduce, to be introduced to these concepts of the idea of looking back, looking at the current situation, looking at future situations in order to make sense of a bigger whole and to make sense of, through critical thinking and self-management skills, um, the, where they situate within the discipline and within the bigger picture in a global environment. So for me, I would, I would say the two key things at stage one would be about introducing students to the idea of the fact that reflective learning can be used to build theory. Um, so theory can just be concepts of that discipline. Theory is used very broadly here. And it also can be used for the purposes of self-development. So they're your key reasons for start starting to use reflective practice pedagogies in your um, unit design. And you can think of all sorts of interesting ways and we'll have some resources to help you do that. But um, they're the key concepts of why, why we're introducing reflective practice at stage one. When you're designing reflective practice exercises for stage one, you might want to think about three key elements. These have helped me when I'm um, creating my uh, uh, assignments around reflective practices for, um, for, for stage one students. You might want to think about what the students, get the student to think about their current behaviour their current knowledge and their current ideas. So there obviously is no judgment in reflection, so it's just about trying to reflect on the here and now and, what, and, and where you situate all of your learning. 
The second step within this is what has been and is being learnt. So because we're attaching this to a particular unit, there needs to be a purpose around why we're thinking about reflecting on current behaviour, current knowledge and current ideas and building that and scaffolding that. And I would say the third key aspect of the reflective practice is the looking forward stage. And this is where we're asking students to be in this continual learning cycle And that's about perceptions of the imagined future self in their discipline. Now, students, in say if they're in first year, will often struggle with this because they don't even know what industry they want to be in. They're they're very green and naive when it comes to um, some clear focus on where their future might be in terms of employability. Um, It's much easier in vocational um, courses and disciplines, but in some instances, this is going to be a really hard area to help the student to investigate around but it really is just about getting them to think critically about what the opportunities might be and to get them to be a bit creative about imagining what their future self and their discipline might be. There is no wrong or right answer. So in order to get the student to think about their themselves within say within society within their discipline and within their future what their future uh, role might be Uh, I would probably say a good idea would be to go back to the rubric and have a look at the key elements of the reflective practice process. And this will help you design your reflective exercises. But I'd also encourage you to think not just in terms of straight written reflections. A lot of people, when we think about reflection, we think about doing, you know, a 200-word written summary or a journal article or some a, a, a journal entry or some sort of response. I'd probably like you to think more broadly about that and, and see whether or not you can introduce some other, some other multimodal forms of learning for students that don't always learn in the, don't want to learn in the same way. So think about students making videos of themselves. These are really great ideas to, if a student's got a video of themselves at stage one and then they might have a video of themselves say at stage three we're in the final stages of their degree they can reflect on those two artifacts and say well look how much I've grown here or look what I thought then it visual um, represent representations of work can also be really useful and sometimes just a quick audio if uh, the assessment task is really tight in terms of timing that might be a satisfactory way to get the student to just start to think about reflective practice as well but As I said, go back to the rubric, which will be in the resources, and just have a look at the key elements of what the process of reflective practice is when designing a reflective practice exercise. So we're not wanting to leave you all alone in this space. It is a very new space, both for educators and for students. So we've devised a rubric um, that is a what, so what, now what rubric with key elements of the reflective practice process, as well as some of the levels that we might expect a student to hit um, when they're in their first stages of, of their reflective practice learning. This rubric is intended to be used as a template for you to then create your own context for your particular discipline and for your particular unit. Um, And there are also assignment examples included in this paradigm. And there there is also going to be, in the second edition, some student work submissions to help you um, see what students have done with this type of reflective practice uh, work within their degree. So in the what question it's basically about having a look at the current situation and these are some questions that you might want to ask to help trigger some responses what is happening now what is the current situation what are you hearing from other people what are you seeing happen how often does that happen and when does that occur what factors are contributing to the current situation what are your major concerns right now what are you thinking about How are you feeling about the situation? Who else is relevant to this situation? What might they think? And how do you know what they think and what's happening is accurate? After you've looked at what happened, then you need to look at the so what. And the way that I like to do that is to split it into two parts. One is about behaviours and your reactions. And the the other aspect is about your thinking and about what you're learning. So in terms of your reactions, 
Um, maybe you ask yourself, what shifts in my behaviour am I noticing as a consequence of this situation? Why did I react in that way at that particular time? What were some of my reactions? Was I happy? Was I sad? Was I anxious? Was I upset? What will I do the next time this happens? How will I react? And the thinking type questions are along the lines of what shifts in my thinking am I noticing as a consequence of this situation? What insights did I gain or am I gaining? What will I do to make sure this doesn't happen again in the future or that this does happen again in the future? Okay, now that we've gone through the situational analysis and we've also been through the so what, what we need to do is ask the question, now what? So this is really about the future. So in a way, it's looking at your reactions, looking at your thinking and seeing how you can cement these uh, ideas, these feelings into future learning practices. So what do I need to do now is one of the key questions that you should ask as a consequence of going through the what and the so what. I would also like to ask questions like, you know, what are your next steps, but how are you going to keep track of your progress and results? So next steps are really critical and keeping track of your progress is also really important. You might want to also think about some obstacles. Obstacles are things that you think might occur as a consequence of um, going through this situation again. There are a number of questions that you might want to ask around this, like how might you overcome these obstacles and who might you need to get to support you through these obstacles. But essentially it's about starting to think about all of these next steps, tracking your behaviour in the, in the now what phase and seeing whether or not you can try to improve your practice based on the analysis that you've gone through so far. Mm -hmm.